Are you having trouble getting started with infrastructure as code? Do you even know what infrastructure is out there to manage? In today's Terraform Tuesday, we are going to check out Firefly, a solution that can help you discover, codify, and manage your existing infrastructure using Terraform. <music> Hey everyone, I'm Ned Bellavance, NedInTheCloud.com, and welcome to another Terraform Tuesday. This time, we are going to talk a little bit about the challenge of adopting infrastructure as code, and we'll see how today's sponsor, Firefly, can help you overcome those challenges and more effectively manage your infrastructure going forward. We're going to walk through the process of onboarding your cloud accounts, source control, and state data to Firefly, and then see how it discovers your infrastructure and determines whether that infrastructure is managed or not. For the unmanaged resources it finds, you can have Firefly codify the infrastructure using a number of different solutions, of course, including Terraform. And once you've brought your infrastructure under management, you can then use Firefly to help out with drift detection and policy compliance. But first, let's talk a little bit about the challenges surrounding infrastructure as code adoption. At this point, I don't think I need to sell you on the benefits of using infrastructure as code, but just because IAC is awesome, that doesn't mean that it's easy to adopt. You have to do things like learn a new programming language of some kind. You need to learn the workflow for deploying IAC and how to manage it going forward. You have to set up pipelines and automation and integrate testing and validation. You have to set up coding standards for consistency across your organization. And of course, you gotta deal with those existing environments that predate IAC adoption. If all that sounds overwhelming, I totally get it. And there's lots of great content out there around learning the languages, the processes, and the patterns for IAC. But what about your existing infrastructure? What the heck do you do about that? Unless you are very lucky and are starting from scratch, you probably have some infrastructure that predates your adoption of IAC. That's especially true for large organizations who probably started adopting the cloud like 10 years ago and have a ton of AWS accounts and Google Cloud projects just hanging out. The very idea of taking all of that infrastructure and converting it to code is daunting to say the least. But even more daunting can be simply finding that infrastructure to begin with. What we have here are really two separate challenges. Challenge number one is finding all the resources you want to start managing with code. And then challenge two is actually developing all the code for that infrastructure you found, which brings me to Firefly. I first saw Firefly in action last year at the AWS Summit in New York City. And I have to admit, I was a little skeptical of their claims, but after taking the service for a test drive, I have to admit, I'm pretty impressed. Firefly is a SaaS solution that integrates into your cloud services, version control, and state management to assist with managing your infrastructure using code. Because it has visibility into your state data and the actual environments, it can help you track what is currently codified, resources that are not under management, it can detect drift in configurations, and use policies to flag resources that are not compliant. Now we're gonna walk through the discovery and the codification pieces, but first you need to onboard your accounts. The onboarding process is pretty straightforward. Once you sign up for a Firefly account, you'll be prompted to start adding integrations. There are five broad categories of integrations. Data sources are where your infrastructure lives, like AWS, a Kubernetes cluster, or some SaaS solutions like Datadog. IAC remote state is where your state data is housed, which could be Terraform Cloud, Google Cloud Storage, or S3 buckets. Version control is exactly what it sounds like. You can connect to GitHub, GitLab, Bitbucket, etc. Notifications will connect into your various communication systems like Slack, Teams, PagerDuty, or there's even a generic webhook if that works for you. And lastly, it can connect into Jira for project management with more options coming soon. 
In my environment, I've connected up AWS and Google Cloud. Firefly provided the necessary configuration for setting up both with options to use the command line, Terraform, or even a native IAC solution like CloudFormation. I also connected my GitHub account for source control and my Terraform Cloud account for state data. Once you've gone through the onboarding process, Firefly begins to scan the contents of your data sources to find all the existing resources. Simultaneously, it's looking at the state data to find all the unique identifiers for resources. Based on what it finds in both, it determines whether each resource is currently managed or unmanaged. Let's take a look at what's in my inventory. Okay, so it looks like it found a mix of unmanaged items and codified items, which is the same as managed. There are two other categories of note here. One is drifted, which will flag resources that no longer match what's defined in the infrastructure as code. Ghost resources are resources that were under management, but the configuration has since been removed, but the resources, they still remain. That's not good and could be a cause for doing a little bit of cleanup. Let's take a closer look at my codified resources. Clicking on one shows me more information about the resource. I can expand the IAC stacks portion to see where the state data lives for this resource. And then expanding the Git section will show me which GitHub repository is being used to manage the resource. Clicking on the relationships section will show me dependent resources that are not directly managed by IAC, but are associated with this EC2 instance. The Elastic Network Interface and the EBS volume could be managed as separate resources, but Firefly is smart enough to know that they are part of the AWS instance resource from Terraform. This is all pretty cool, but let's take a look at the unmanaged resources. Clicking on the unmanaged category applies a filter on the inventory view. Now I'm only seeing my unmanaged resources. If I click on a single resource, I can get more information about the resource. And there's also this neat codify button, which quickly builds out a sample Terraform configuration for me. Although you can see across the top that there are plenty of other available options beyond Terraform, like Pulumi or even Crossplane. We'll come back to the codify function in a moment, but first I want to show a bit more about the filtering. Now let's say I know I have a VPC in AWS and I wanna get that VPC codified. But not just the VPC, I also want to include the associated resources like the subnets, the route tables, the internet gateway, etc. I can start by filtering on my AWS account only, and then I can pick the region or location where my VPC exists. In my case, it's in US West 1. If all my resources had something like a common tag, I could filter on that as well. But since they don't, instead I can pick the resource types I want to include from the list that is dynamically generated based on the current view. I'm going to pick all the related VPC resources, which now includes all the VPC components that I want to codify. With all my VPC components showing in the main pane, I'll select all of them and click on the codify option. This is going to build out a configuration in Terraform that has the exact values it found for the resources. It's not using any input variables or internal references, just the raw values. Now, this is a great starting point for codifying existing infrastructure because it's not going to change anything about the existing infrastructure. It's just going to codify it as is. At the bottom of the screen, I can toggle the provider block, which will add the AWS provider and the Terraform block to this configuration. It's defaulting to version 4.8.0 of the provider, but I can always change that later if I need to. Lastly, I can toggle the import block option to create the necessary import blocks for this configuration. Now that is going to save me a lot of time and effort because I don't have to go and track down each identifier for my resources. What that means is I can copy this configuration as is and drop it into a code editor like VS Code. I'll do that now. Over in Visual Studio Code, I pasted in the code that Firefly gave me, and now I'm gonna pull up the terminal and run a Terraform in it. After it has downloaded the provider plugin, 
I'll run a terraform validate command to verify the code that was produced is valid, which it appears to be. And now I'm going to run a terraform plan to see what the results look like. After a few moments, I get back 13 resources to import, zero to add, change, or destroy. This is exactly what you would want when importing existing infrastructure into Terraform. With this code, we have a solid baseline to import the existing infrastructure without altering it in any way. Once we have the code in place, we can start making changes to it, like adding input variables, introducing modules, or defining outputs. To make sure Firefly knows that the code is now being managed, I can take advantage of the GitHub integration. Back in the Firefly UI, I can click on the pull request option and select the GitHub integration. From there, I'll look for a private repository I have set up for this demo called Firefly West VPC. I'll leave the target branch as main and leave the other settings as is, and I'll click on the create button. The interface will create the pull request and then provide a link to the PR for me to review. I'll click on that link and it takes me to the PR in GitHub. Now I've already created a workspace in Terraform Cloud that is linked to this repository. So I can merge this pull request and then head over to Terraform Cloud to view the workspace and kick off a run. In Terraform Cloud, I will kick off a new run. Since we don't have any input variables defined, I don't have to add any variable values to the workspace. For authentication, I have added my AWS credentials defined as a variable set and made that set available to this workspace. After a few moments, I get back a plan that matches what we saw in VS Code, 13 to import, none to add, change, or destroy. I'll click on confirm and apply, and once the run completes, my infrastructure is now under management. It is codified. Firefly will detect that the resources are now codified the next time it syncs up with Terraform Cloud, and it will update the inventory to reflect that. This is some pretty awesome stuff if you ask me. With very little effort, I've codified a bunch of AWS resources. Now I can go through the process of refactoring the code without disrupting the existing infrastructure. This is a great first step, but it's only the beginning. Once you've got your infrastructure codified and under management, what else can Firefly do for you? Firefly is constantly scanning your infrastructure and comparing it to the codified state. That means it can help you in a few different regards. The first is drift detection. We saw earlier how there is a drifted category in the inventory. If Firefly sees that the existing infrastructure no longer matches up with what's in the code and state, it will flag that resource as drifted. So if, say, Joe the admin did some emergency troubleshooting on a resource and made some undocumented change, Firefly can detect an alert on that drift. Now what you do about that drift is up to you. Maybe the changes Joe made should become permanent, or maybe they should be reverted, but at least you know they happened. Firefly can also detect another subtler type of drift. That would be the addition of resources to an account or project that are not in the code at all. Drift detection really only helps you with codified resources that have been altered outside the code. But now you also have visibility into resources that are not codified at all. You can alert on new resources being added to a project or an account and then decide whether to codify them or not. Lastly, Firefly can help you with applying policy as code. They have a robust policy and insights engine that can flag when resources are out of compliance, whether they are codified or not. You can use the built-in policies or create your own using Open Policy Agent and Rego. And they've added a generative AI option to help you write policies. As someone who struggles with writing good Rego, this is a very welcome feature. If any of those pique your interest, I'm going to be digging deeper into day two operations with Firefly in a future video. So keep an eye out for that and I'll add a card here once it drops. Adopting infrastructure as code is a multifaceted challenge. And that's especially true when you're trying to convert your existing environments over to this new paradigm. Firefly can help you with the day one processes of discovery and codification 
and then help you with day two operations like drift detection and policy enforcement. One thing that impressed me with Firefly was the rapid pace of development and their responsiveness to customer feedback. When I was working on the demonstration, I noticed that the import block generation had a bug. I opened up a chat window on the Firefly site, reported the bug, and it was fixed within the hour. That's pretty impressive. If you're in the process of adopting infrastructure as code, or you're looking for a way to manage your existing infrastructure, I highly recommend you check out Firefly. There's a link down in the description to sign up for a free trial, and thank you to Firefly for sponsoring this video. And of course, thanks to you, awesome human, for watching and supporting the channel. Until next time, stay healthy, stay safe out there. Bye for now.